Hi, welcome to the second episode of EV Smoke, the best place to find magic smoke porn anywhere on the interwebs. Uh, We had 75,000 views on the uh, first video and about a 90% thumbs up ratio, so it'll be interesting to see the results from this uh, second one to see if people really do uh, like this concept or not. Oh, by the way, I had like... uh, 70 80 entries like submissions uh, after the previous one so sorry i can only do a few so here we go i've got some beautiful ones for two beautiful ones first check this out let alone my beautiful backdrop there isn't it wonderful anyway here we go ta-da thank you very much to uh max talk um uh, who is on the uh, ev log forum sent in this Look at this. It's an IGBT, an insulated gate bipolar transistor. It's had the the absolute snot blown out of it. Now, this is the uh, die because these are typically IGBTs. I'm going to do a teardown on this um, soon, actually. I've uh, I've had one, uh, like a real proper industrial one, um, for ages I've been meaning to tear down. Anyway, these things are usually uh, not encapsulated as such. They're like bare die on heatsink, and then they've got uh, the goop on them, which we'll see in the next submission but look at this max talk believes this is the uh gate and the uh source i don't know my igbt um uh, you know die construction and things like that but look at the just it's incredible look at the big gouges taken out of here so that's between gate and source is it that is just oh and look it's just molten all around here it's everywhere it's just remarkable so if that is that like a gate overload or something um, and it's punched through and it's just yeah it's just shorted out and all the energy's been dissipated in that poor little sucker oh look at it that's just that's a beautiful photo I love that and uh, he got this photo by uh, cleaning off all the soot afterwards it was like completely black so this is nicely cleaned up for our benefit thank you very much Max Talk And if you thought the last one was beautiful, look at this. This is a stunning, absolutely stunning photo. Thank you very much, Justin Bell, who sent this one in. Once again, it's an IGBT uh, from a Schneider Electric uh, Ultivar 71, which is a uh, three-phase synchronous uh, frequency inverter up to 630 kilowatt job. And uh, this is the magic smoke actually captured actually captured inside the gel as i said before um these igbt's are usually exposed uh, dyes as you can see there and you can see the bond wires going over in it's the top igbt that's um had the magic smoke released and it's been captured inside this gel and then sure what side of um what sort of goo gunky gel it actually is if anyone uh, knows please let <laughs> please let us know um but look how perfect is this we've captured the magic smoke the active ingredient in all components that absolutely wins the award for best photo so far no doubt whatsoever i find it absolutely fascinating how it's like layered like that is that you know some sort of i'd love to know the physical process involved in that of the the energy and the smoke being uh you know (laughs) released inside this gel and this layering that takes place but it's absolutely beautiful and you can see around here like something's happened to the gel there obviously some sort of you know heat effect has done something to it but wow does it get any better than that Next up, we have a submission from somebody who called themselves Dicko Weed. That's all they identify themselves as. So, okay, fair enough. Thank you very much, Dicko Weed. This is a um, ST 700 volt uh, triac, and check it out. It is, uh, yeah, the lead's been absolutely blown apart. The board has been burnt, a huge hole burned in the board. Absolutely classic. And an interesting part about this photo is look at the TO220, look at the leads, it's lifted way up off the board and you can see that with the white thermal compound uh, behind there and it's because there's no bolt in this thing it's just got one of those uh, brass retaining clips these are you know fairly common in uh, you know cheaper 
kind of uh, installations they're just easier to install those than a bolt but it's actually propelled upwards so whether or not uh, physically move that upwards to get a better photo or whether or not that was part of the fault event actually propelled the thing upwards I doubt it though I think it's probably been manually moved upwards here in this case it come came from a DeLonghi coffee machine I um, mean you might think well there's something wrong with this DeLonghi coffee machine what happened to it well let's have a look Wah, 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 wah. That is what you think it is. It's a cockroach. <laughs> absolutely fried itself while the, uh, this thing was actually on. And wham oh, the magic smoke released from not only the triac, but from that poor cockroach as well. <laughs> I gave him a hell of a fright, I'm sure. And the thing is, anyone who's used to uh, repairing stuff or, you know, taking apart old stuff, it's very common to find uh, failures like this getting themselves inside equipment. Because a lot of um, these uh, creatures like the warmth of the equipment. So they crawl inside and, yeah, sort of bridging the wrong tracks. And, yep, that's what happens. Oops. Next up, we've got one from Dexter's Labs. Thank you very much, Dexter's Lab. Um, this is a MagStim 200 transcranial magnetic stimulation machine. It sounds like one of those, you know, woo-woo machines, but uh, no, it's not. This is a genuine one designed for uh, neurological uh, research, uh, cortical mapping, you know, diagnosing nervous disorders and things like that. So this is a legitimate uh, bit of kit. You know, there's a lot of engineering which goes into one of these. Anyway, so there's a whole bank of these uh, power Power resistors here and you know they're huge monsters uh, they're not attached to any uh, heat sink so I assume this thing's got fan and oh yeah there's a fan in the back there you can see the fan so it's got airflow yep in that position so it's got airflow over the resistors um, and look wah, 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 wah. geez you can see the central rod inside this thing the uh, the ceramic on the out uh, side of course is just to aid in the uh, power dissipation of this thing of course it doesn't uh, do anything for the resistance it's the wire wound resistor on that uh, former inside the thing but wow there's a whole bunch of them they're all in parallel you can see there you can see the traces on the uh on the bottom side of the board like that so they're all in parallel and um it's interesting to note that the ones near the middle near the connector have uh, fared worse but there's one right on the outlier so there's extra resistance in the uh, trace going down to that one so it's interesting that that last one has uh cracked right open and these three here are all intact and then these three are uh, dead anyway um it's surprising that we didn't see any uh burnt traces and everything you see the fiberglass uh structure in there that when um you know fr4 fiberglass uh class uh, pcbs burn like this they're woven fiberglass so you'll often see the woven structure inside these things wow look at that that is serious business just absolutely shattered and cracked in half and that's the backside uh, heat pattern there. Obviously, there's a bit, <laughs> the main part is around here, but over here as well. So obviously, you know, the, the power wasn't equally shared among these resistors. So that's, you know, uh, rather interesting. But these power resistors are like, you know, usually 5 or 10% tolerance anyway. So it could have just been, you know, bad luck that these ones here happen to be, you know, lower value um, than the other ones and, uh, you know, handled the grunt of the... Uh, power dissipation there be and you can see some of the uh, laminate around here you can see the central spot where it's uh, the main power has been dissipated but you can see then that there's a uh, uh, radial pattern around that and that's probably like a delamination caused by the heat uh, spreading out they don't call these uh, FR4 laminate for nothing and last up here, we've got one from uh, EV blog uh, forum member Brumby. Thank you very much, Brumby. Uh, as you can see in the uh, file name here, it's from that uh, JCAR warehouse clearance sale. And this was from a line interactive uh, UPS, like probably one of these uh, no-namers. And we've got some uh, FP50N06s here. These are 50-volt, uh, sorry, 60-volt, uh, 50-amp um, N-channel power MOSFETs and oops they've just been blown apart absolutely the case just absolutely blown to smithereens here this one over on the left here looks like it has uh you know suffered a bit more in terms of um actual uh, flame 
but it is a great photo. It's just an absolutely brilliant foliar mode. So yeah, I think this one actually had some uh, flames associated. This one here, it's just had the ass blown out of it. You can see the uh, you can see the dye inside there, and just half the case is just blown off. And this one is still hanging by the lead. Good on your lead, still hanging in there. But uh, once again, you can see the dye inside there and that energy has to be released that magic smoke has to be released somehow and it manifests itself by uh probably the weakest you know or some minor imperfection in the molding the um the over mold the plastic encapsulant over molding on that probably you know the weakest point of that just started to form a crack and then within half a millisecond or something boom there it goes and you know <laughs> Then the amount of energy released in something like this is just ridiculous. Uh, you know, even 1,000 watts or something, which doesn't sound like much, but if you dissipate that in a tiny package like this instantaneously, then, yeah, you're going to explode the case apart. You know, even these uh, 220 uh, cases, they're, you know, they're designed for reasonable power handling, but even with all that heat sink in there, that's not going to do any good whatsoever for instantaneous um, overloads for whatever failure mode uh, this particular one is. I don't know. It might have been a uh, line impulse or, uh, you know, something like that. There wasn't any adequate input protection or enough input protection, and then it just uh, shorted these babies out, and wham. And you can see that, you know, usually it's gate, um, the left-hand uh, pin, pin one here is going to be the gate, and then the drain and uh, source are going to be these two pins here, and smack, look at that, wow. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed those photos, some absolutely brilliant ones today, sorry if you've sent one in and I haven't got around to it, uh, the link is down below to email them to me, that's the best uh, place, and they go to a magic part of my inbox where I can uh, then take a look at them later. So, hopefully, if you like this, please give it a big thumbs up. Uh, like the concept of EV smoke, give it a big thumbs up. Um, if not, give it a big thumbs down. If enough people thumbs it down, I'll stop it. If enough people thumbs it up and view it, I'll keep doing it. Catch you next time.